In a world where we have everything and it's still not enough, we're often left wondering, is this really it? Deep inside, you know there's more to life. You're ready to leave behind the old push your way through and claim the deeper, more meaningful life that's calling you. That's what we invite you to explore with us. We're your hosts, Stephanie Allen and Marin Oslak. And this is the Soulful Leader Podcast. Yay. <laughs> Welcome back to the Soulful Leader Podcast. My name is Marin and I'm here with Stephanie. And recently, Stephanie and I were talking about something that felt very controversial to me. And so we've had multiple conversations about it. And we thought we'd bring it to you. And it was, she said something along the lines of that we're not to be anything more than someone expects us to be. And I was raised to go over and above, mm -hmm. to do more, right? Don't do like, I hear it's like one of the things that is a pet peeve of mine is I consider people slackers who do just the minimum, just enough to get by. And so our conversations over, I'd say the last couple of weeks have been around, what does it mean? Like when Stephanie said it to me, it was in a particular context. And what does that mean? And what does it mean for us as human beings, us as business leaders, us as partners? And where does that fit in our lives to like, there are definitely places where it's, you know, go over and above. Absolutely. And there are definitely places where, you know what, going over and above is stepping on somebody else's toes and it's actually hurtful to them. So how do you know the difference? Yeah, that's such a great question because it can be very overwhelming when someone is just pouring on love or, you know, gratitude or whatever they're giving to you. It's like, sometimes it's like, oh, wait, I can't take that all in. It's too much. Mm. I'm overloaded. I'm overwhelmed. I could say a lot of things like that. And sometimes I haven't even asked for what you're giving them. You know, and so, yeah, like not to be just get by or what, do the bare minimum. That's not what we're saying here at all. It's really listening to what someone is needing behind, behind even what they're saying. Because sometimes people, most people don't know what they need. Right. And, and we go into assuming that what we, that, hey, I know what they do need and I'm just going to give it to them, but they haven't really asked for it. <laughs> so they're not really quite ready for it. And so sometimes just being in that uncomfortability of not knowing Right. And being and being exploring. It's like, well, you know, when you know what you need, let me know how I can be of service to you. So I want to unpack a couple of things there. Yeah. One of them is that like I think that we've all experienced that that moment where somebody has gone over and above and now it feels awkward. Yeah. Feels unbalanced. It feels unbalanced. And so I wonder if it's intention behind, and that's what I think you're getting to, of mm -hmm. listening, of being present, what is actually needed rather than here's what I have to give. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think about how much information you and I have around life mission and spirituality. And, and if mm -hmm. we gave all of it to somebody, it would be a, like a freaking fire hose. Well, and they're going to be standing there like deer stuck in a headlight, like Right. Frozen, like, well, what I don't even mean? know what to do with that. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so we are, we, when, when we work with clients, we're listening to where they are and what's the next one, two, three, four steps that might be, you know, best for them. And then we start there. And this is what any teacher, any leader will do when they are able to be present. Mm -hmm. And I say that because so often we're not present. We're thinking about what we have to give rather than what somebody needs in that moment. And oftentimes what they need in that moment is not at all what we have to give, which is scary for us. Yeah, there's, there's a scary part of like when I want something more for someone, because I see their p potential, their possibility, yeah. and I want it so much for them. I know they can have it, and I know I can support them in getting it, but they're not ready. Well, and I'll say, 
and it's not even just that they're, they're not, not in ready. a place to hear that particular thing or right. there's... like it's out of time or it's out of sync right but they're also it's like that's my agenda that's yeah. not theirs I, that's where i want to get it's like my own self reflection is like i i want it more than they do and i know as a therapist when i when i work with clients i say i cannot care more about someone's health than they're willing to show up for their own the minute i do i feel like what's wrong with this person they're so ungrateful for what i'm hearing but they've not asked me so it's like well wait a minute let's turn that around i'm being disrespectful i'm not listening to where they're at right now and what they're needing and what is digestible and what is at their rhythm at their pace and even the nuances that maybe what i want to give them they're like i don't even want that that's that's not even of interest to me and i i think this is important in relationships as well as with ourselves with each other it's like i think there's a, that's where a lot of friction happens with people and they get miscommunicating is because we do i think at our core being we do love and care about each other so much and we often see each other's blind spots and beauty spots that they don't see and so how do we slow down and temper it in the way of like well what what are you needing and where are you going and what's important to you what are your values we talked about values in some of our other podcasts and just really looking at all of that, it, it's gentler, isn't it? It's kinder. It takes more work, though. Most definitely. From that, yes, most definitely. Right? So, it's not easy. Right. Because now we need to actually look at ourselves in within the relationship, whether it's a business relationship or a personal relationship, and say, here's my agenda. What's their agenda? Mm -hmm. And is what I have to offer in alignment with that. And also, like you said, in rhythm with it. So when yeah. I say alignment, it's like, okay, we're both headed in the same direction and I have something to offer that would actually be helpful for them. When I say rhythm is now the right time because yeah. it may not be. It's like a combination lock, right? Like yeah. you might, maybe the, the combination lock is zero, eight, you know, 22 to unlock the lock and you're giving them 22 first. Well, that's not going to unlock the lock. They need zero. They need the, the, you know, that one first and then they need eight. And it's like, there's a, there's an order or a synchron. It's like, and the only way we're going to know that is to create space and gentleness to listen and ask questions. But that's also, I, I know many times too, we'll ask somebody, Hey, what do you want? And they're like, I don't know what I want. I have no idea. You're like you go do it and and you go you go make this happen and I'll tell you. And it's like that's kind of a setup for not such a good, you know, because it's just not helpful. Or well, this, this is a common one too. I have it with married couples who say, I've been married to you for 25 years. And if you don't know what I want by now, then what are we doing together? And it's like I, I said this to someone the other day and I said, you, you realize that what she's saying to you, and he goes, no, not a clue. It's like, she hasn't got a clue what she wants and she's trying to make you the one that figures it out for her and she, and you can't, and you feel helpless. Yeah. So you just smile at her and you say, I love you, honey. And you let me know what you want. And I am right there for you. I am, I am right there in your court. Like feel free. You are safe to communicate it to me. And I said this to actually one of the, one of the, the female. And, and I said, what would you do? And she goes, I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what I really want. I said, well, if you did know what you really wanted, what would it be? Or, mm -hmm. you know, she goes, well, I want more time. I'm like, what would you do with more time? I don't know. She said, <laughs> I said, you see this pattern, right? I said, to give yourself some time and space to really turn that outward wanting to give and care for your family and your, your students and, you know, all the people that you you care about and work for to actually turn it inward and go, what is it that I want? What is it that mm -hmm. I need and why? That's a scarier you know, journey. I think that that's, yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> there's so much incoming as far as telling us the world has 8 million ideas of what we should want. I should want to be thin. I should want to have money. I should want a certain house. I should want a certain car. Like, I should want a family. I should want to not have a family. You know, like whatever it is. And then it feels like we have two choices. 
to either own that and say, yes, that's what I want, or to rebel against it and Mm -hmm. say, no, that's not what I want. I want the opposite. Well, where does what I actually want fit into that? We're not, yeah. we're not taught to, to look inside and know what we want. So it makes perfect sense that, that we hear, especially married couples, because, you know, when, when we truly love somebody and we feel that safe with them, we set them up. <laughs> I know. Because we know that they're going to stay with us. So we set them up with things like, well, if you didn't, if you don't know who I want to like now, you know, what are you doing with me, right? <sighs> because I don't know what I really like or what yeah. I really want. So I'm going to dump you, it on you. Know, you know, and we we have all of these fears around, like it's it's scary to look inside and what if I discover what I want and it's not you or what I want is not oh. this. And now I have to make a change and it seems so scary and afraid. It's like sometimes it's easier just to to go along, to get along, so to speak. I think we do that a yeah. lot, especially yeah. in business. I've yeah. invested, you know, it's in business we have this uh, sunk cost fallacy. Especially in, in investing, we talk about sunk cost fallacy. So oftentimes when we buy stocks – we look at what our investment is, and then we keep comparing to, well, I paid a dollar for the stock, and now it's at 50 cents. So I don't want to sell it because I'm going to lose money. I'm, I've sunk this much money into it, so I'm not going to sell it. And then it drops to 25, and then it, you know, it keeps dropping. Well, if I had sold it at 50 cents, I would have made at least 50 cents on the dollar, right? And now it's at a penny, and I've lost mm-hmm. all of it. So there's that... I don't want to sell it because instead of looking at the reality of the stock in the moment, the company is failing and going under. And I, I, but I spent a dollar on that stock, right? So when we apply that to our lives, the sunk cost fallacy, when I say it's a fallacy, it's like, it's not true. Whatever you spent on it originally, that money is gone. So where is it now in this moment? And when I say that, like when I've invested 10 years of my life in a particular job or a particular career or a particular relationship, and it's not right for me anymore, I can look at it like, well, I've put this much time in. And if I open that door, I don't, that's kind of scary because what if it's not what I'm meant to do? Well, do you want to spend another 10 years to see if it's maybe not what you're supposed to do? That's like losing the next 25 cents on that dollar, right? Or say, you know what? I invested that time to find out that this isn't what I want to do. And that's a, that's a great investment. Yeah. That's you got the return right there of called, called consciousness and wisdom and yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I can start the next chapter of like, oh, so what do I want to do? Yeah, I often, I, I'll sit sit with people too and say, you know, everything serves. Mm. I, I know I, I know people who come in who have a, a terrible diagnosis of something and they tend to default to what did I do wrong? Yeah. Or they'll do this with a relationship. You know, it's starting to end. What did I do wrong? I don't know why. We, we have such a culture of like, it must be, or what did they do wrong? It's either what did I do wrong or what did they, they do wrong? And it's like, what if it wasn't any of that? What if it was actually perfect? Because now you have this insight and awareness of like, what it is that is of value to you and, and you've discovered and grown and to really own that. And now... Where do you want to be putting your time and energy moving forward? One of the things that I like to do, um, I remember I had a mentor at one point that had uh, said, you know, it's like most people say, why not me? Mm -hmm. You know, or most people say, why why me? No, most people say, why me? Like, why me? Why can't I have this? Why not? And he decided to flip it around and say, well, why not me? Why couldn't I have that? Mm -hmm. Why couldn't I have? So I decided to flip that question and say, instead of what did I do wrong in when things start to fall apart, it's like, what did I do right? 
Yeah. What did claim I do the, right? Claim the gold. Yeah. And what did they do right? So that we grew to the point where we are now. And one of the things that I found is not only is it more, I end up with a lot more energy. I've also found that it's, it serves me going forward with that person. So I had a, um, teacher at the studio and our paths were going opposite directions. And instead of, oh, she's this, she's that, blah, blah, blah. We sat down together and said, all right, what did we do right to get to this point so that we're going in different directions? And it was such an aha moment for both of us that we're still friends and (laughs) we still work with each other. And it's like, oh, that's it just is, it's a, it sets up a totally different relationship instead of the blame and shame gain and pointing, well, you did this and this is right. right. It's like, oh, it, it just is, it's a freedom question. Well, it's a growth awareness mm. rather than a fixed awareness, meaning you're focusing on where you're growing, where you're evolving rather than where you're stuck. Yeah. And we know that if we keep focusing on where we're stuck all the time, it's like you you start to feel hopeless and helpless. Instead of like, wow, you know, I'm not the same as I was a year ago. I'm growing. I'm learning. I'm discovering. I'm uncovering, you know, different elements of myself that I didn't even know existed. And it, we're so afraid of the unknown. Like, I think we put in our future, oh, it's just going to get worse. I'm going to get older. It's going to get harder. There's going to be less money, less time. I'm like, that doesn't have to be true. No. It, it's true if you're fixed. But if you are focusing on what's right and what did you learn and how are you growing, it can become really exciting. And what, what did the other person teach you? What, you know, there's always some great gifts about, yeah, you know, I really learned how to be, how to be a better communicator or what my value, my worth was. Like, I'm not going to settle for less than that ever again. Or like you start to really discover, it's like, I didn't even know that I didn't, that, that, that I actually liked doing this. Like, who knew? I opened my, opened my eyes and opened my heart to something completely different. And I, I think that's what's so wonderful about being a human being. Hmm. You know, it's just such a gift. Such a gift. And I think it takes us back to the beginning of how do we know the difference of when we are supposed to overgive, do more, Mm -hmm. and when we're supposed to hold that counsel and say, it's not mine to give right now. It's not, it's not my place. It's the inner discovery. It's being Mm -hmm. present. It's asking those questions. It's being willing to be wrong and saying, oops, I overgave. And now we're in a one up, one down. I think that's the key is like, when we get to uh, anytime we feel like, or we put somebody else in a one up, one down relationship, we're not meant to be, we're meant to be partners with people. Even, you know, if somebody knows more than we do, or like we're mm-hmm. working with a teacher or, a, you know, whatever, it's still that we're in a partnership with them. It's not a shame thing where I don't know, and you have to do it for me. And that's not yeah. empowering. No, 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 not at all. That's codependent. <laughs> right. You know, and in, in that way, it's like, that's you know, the biggest you, thing. Here's another saying I have. One of my good friends always says to me, she goes, Steph, if you have to drag them in, you got to drag them around. <laughs> it's like somebody needs to walk on their own two feet and ask for help and then be open and willing to receive it. If you drag them in, they're going, you basically taught them that that's, you're going to be your relationship, that they're going to look to you to drag them around everywhere and yeah. drag them out and drag them up and drag them over. And that's going to be a drag, (laughs) basically, instead of saying, you know, checking in with them and saying, you know, how can I, how can I help you? Are you, do you want this? And they might say, no, I don't. I'm like, okay, here's some other options or where are you going? And just kind of tuning in, but also allowing that other person that they may not want anything or they may not, not, not know what they want. And so for us, we need to be willing to let it go. Right. Which means letting go of the sale, which means letting go of the relationship, letting go of, you know, that whole, you know, if, uh, 
if you set a butterfly free, what? How does that go? That saying, if you set it free. If, you, if, if it you comes love back, something, set that's it free. It. <laughs> if it comes back to you, it's yours. And when we say yours, it's like it belongs with you. It's not yeah. that you own it, right? No, so, it means that you set it free, so that it can be resonating at the same rhythm as you. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise you just become into a relationship that is fusing. And we do this with, you know, parent child. We do this with, you know, a teacher student. We do this with um, our boss and employee. Like you see, we tend to project on the other person a, a parent role. Like, please rescue me. Please take mm -hmm. care of me. Oh, please. Or I am a parent role. I will take care of you. I will show you what to do. And this is right. And that's wrong. And it's like, what if we could let all that go and just be curious about each other, no matter what age or what station we're at, to be really open to, hey, we're in this relationship for a reason, whatever kind of the relationship it is, what are we here to offer, both give and receive from each other? What are we mm -hmm. learning? How are we growing and evolving? And I think the question too is like, how do you know if you are giving too much or too little? It's like, ask yourself where it's coming from. If it's coming inside yourself from a fear, like I'm giving because they can't do it themselves, or I'm giving because I'm afraid they're going to mess up and make a mistake, that's coming from fear. And and I'll tell you, the other person feels that. And that it makes them feel less than, incapable. It's it's terrible for their self-worth and self-esteem and their self-confidence. Like just It just erodes it versus saying, you know, I believe in you. I believe in you and I believe that you'll take the time and reflection to look inside is to say what you're needing or what. And I am here for you. I am here for you when, when you need me. You know, we talk about the fact that you know, we're the Soulful Leader podcast and what is a leader. And so often leadership is defined by a title. Mm. To me, what you just said is leadership. The person who can come from that place of service without the fear mm -hmm. of being abandoned or not being enough or doing the wrong thing or saying the right thing, like what all the stories that we tell ourselves of why we either overgive or undergive or that like if we can surrender all of that and just be in service to our partner, to our clients, to our bosses, to our employees, you know, like those are the soulful leaders. First of all, they're leaders, period. And mm -hmm. they are soulful leaders. And I don't care what your station or your title is, whether it's janitor or, you know, dog walker or mm -hmm. anything, you are impacting somebody and empowering them, which Absolutely. means you're a leader. Which I think is giving way to our next podcast, how we lead. Another is how we lead ourselves. So how mm. are you leading yourself? How do you even start with that? Oh, I love that. I'm looking forward to unpacking on that one with you. Me too. So, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you all for joining us this week. Hopefully uh, you have some questions for us. If you do, you can find us at the Soulful, at Soulful Leaders on both Facebook and LinkedIn. You can find us on our website, The Soulful Leader Podcast, also on all of the podcast platforms. Share us with a friend, please. We would love to be a part of all of your lives. And you can find our business page at tslp.life. So if you'd like to work with us, pop on over there and you can look at our work with us page. We'll see you all next week on The Soulful Leader Podcast. And that wraps up another episode of the Soulful Leader Podcast with your hosts, Stephanie Allen and Marin Oslak. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to dive deeper, head over to our website at thesoulfulleaderpodcast.com. Until next time.